Hi there, in this video, I want to have a quick chat about something that often comes up when I'm teaching, when I'm doing my workshops or on my membership group. And people ask me about their paintings and they say, well, this painting's not really working. What is it about this painting that's not working? It seems too busy. And that seems to be something that's quite common. People saying they think their paintings are a bit busy. And I think when you're working in this uh, quite energetic, abstracted or semi-abstracted way, you have to be quite careful that your paint surface doesn't get overwhelmed and that there's a bit of balance in there. So when people say to me they think their paintings are a bit busy, I think it often comes down to some quite basic elements. And as soon as you notice them, you can see where the adjustments need to be made. So what I thought I'd do is I go through a few of the paintings that are in my sketchbooks here and just talk about the ones that are working, the ones that maybe aren't working quite so well, and what those elements are that actually help get a sense of balance and structure and composition in a painting that doesn't have a traditional compositional structure, like a normal kind of pictorial structure that's a little bit abstracted. And so it's those elements, to find those elements that actually can give that balance in a more abstracted piece of work. So as I said, I have a few of my sketches in front of me and I'm just gonna go through a few of them and just talk about the elements that I think are working or maybe not working so well in others. Let's have a quick look at this piece of work here. It's uh, one of my acrylic collages. I did the painting on a large piece of paper and cropped it down. It's actually a video of me working on this piece. I'll put the link up here. And I think it's got quite a good structure to it. And I think it's got a lot of the elements in it that I think make it work. So let's just go through them. I think in general, it's got a good contrast. And in my work, certainly, I like to have good contrast in my work, a strong sense of light and dark. And in this painting, it's kind of divided to this sort of bottom and top, but in general, across the whole painting, there's a good sense of contrast. It's got a good, uh, variety of different marks in it and that can be something that's really important. It's having all these different things happening on the surface. There's the big swooshy brush marks, these dark brush marks behind. I've left some spaces here as well. I think when I was doing this uh, collage I quite enjoyed the fact that this brush mark here was actually making a little circular mark up in this top uh, left corner. And then it's got this pastel, this is an oil pastel, these kind of larger drawn marks running through it. So they're slightly larger drawn marks, but obviously not as big as these uh, uh, big brush strokes behind. And then there's quite a lot of scratches and little splashes and things, so there's the smaller marks in there as well. And then again, there's more of these pencil marks, so finer marks as well. So it's going from all these different scales of marks in the same surface. There's the large brush marks, the drawn marks, the smaller drawn marks, these kind of marks that have been created almost by accident through the cropping process, and then the pencil marks as well to give that sort of slightly finer uh, energy that can run through the image. Another thing that helps this image to work, I think, is that it has quite a limited palette. I often work with a very limited palette, as you know from watching the videos on this channel. Uh, I think sometimes that can definitely be an advantage, just using a few colours and mixing them in different ways to get you know, warmer or cooler colours as you're doing your work. You can push them in different directions. Just because you're using the same few colours doesn't mean that all your paintings have to look the same because you can mix them in different ways. But having a small selection of colours, just a few and a limited palette actually can help a lot. And I've talked about this before, how that limitations can actually be a strength. It stops you getting overwhelmed trying to mix all types of different colors using your favorite colors maybe. So keeping a nice simple color palette, a nice basic color palette that you can work with, doesn't get overwhelming, doesn't get too confused, that can really help as well. And then the painting doesn't get overwhelmed. And then the last thing I like to see in my paintings, and this is a bit related to the contrast, and that's a good 
balance between the light and dark spaces. And those help to create what I like to call quiet spaces. So this lighter, generally lighter area down the bottom of the painting here keeps it a little less busy. And I think that's one of the main things that can be a problem if your paintings get too busy, is that there's too much happening all over the surface. So if you can keep some areas of your painting, and in this case, it's quite a large area down the bottom of the painting here, a little bit quieter with a bit less going on, then those areas where it is a bit busier, like here where there's all these drawn marks and lots of little speckles and scratches and things going on, it doesn't overwhelm the painting. It doesn't make the whole thing feel too busy. Okay, let's have a look at one of the others. I've um, got a few marked here. Let's have a look at this one. And this is quite a good example of what I was saying about the color palette. So even though this painting is very different in the general look, it's a lot bluer, it's a lot pushed more towards the blue part of the uh, color palette than this one. I was using exactly the same colors. I was taking, I had the same colors with me, but I've just mixed them in a slightly different way. So just because you have a limited amount of colors with you, you've got a limited palette, doesn't mean that all your paintings have to look the same. So obviously this has got quite a few of those same elements in it. I've got a general feeling of balance between the light areas and the darker areas. Got a nice light area towards the top here and it's a bit heavier and darker towards the bottom, giving a bit of weight to it. This is a bit quieter up here, but also these dark areas, these large dark areas, are actually serving that quiet area um, purpose that I was talking about before. Because they have these big, bold marks down here with these dark brush marks, they're giving it a bit of an anchor. They're giving the whole painting a bit of an anchor. And when I've worked over them, I've done it quite sparingly, so I've got these large uh, pink kind of um, marks here with the pastel and a few little pencil marks as well. But in general, again, this area doesn't have a huge amount going on. It's quite simple. And the same up here, even though there's a lot of different marks going on within this area here, in general, it's a little bit quieter towards the top as well. So there's again, there's that balance between the busier parts and the quieter parts. And it helps the whole painting feel more harmonious, not too busy. Okay, so let's have a look at one now that maybe doesn't work quite so well. So I picked this one here. I think overall it has a good sense of light and dark. It's got fairly good contrast in it and there are a few pencil marks and things going on, but I think it's lacking something. I think it's lacking the energetic marks. So maybe it could do with some of the kinds of marks that are in this one, some of these drawn marks to give it a bit of energy and movement. Because if you look at that one, there's a lot going on, like I was saying, but there's also these reasonably quiet spaces to give it a bit of balance. And then you flip back to this one. Yeah, it's got those quiet spaces and it's got the contrast, but it hasn't got the marks. So it's gone too far the other way. It's not overly busy. It's just a little bit dull and could just do with jazzing up a little bit. So maybe something that's a little bit in between those two would be this one. It's quite quiet in general. It's got a lot of this sandy kind of color over the whole surface, but it also does have enough of these marks, enough of the drawing marks, enough of the movement. I think this big swoosh of a brush mark down here gives it quite a lot of energy and movement as well. So although it's a bit quieter, it's got enough going on in the, in the, within this frame of the painting, that it's not overwhelmed, it's not too quiet like that previous one where it was just a bit boring, and it's not overworked, hasn't got marks everywhere, just making the whole thing feel a bit crazy. It has a quieter feel about it, but I rather like that, it's a bit simpler. So, you know, there's no formula necessarily for any of this. You have to use your own judgment, you have to use your own sense of what you want out of your pieces of work. And you can adjust the balance between these different elements to get different feelings. So, so this first one we were looking at, yeah, there's a lot going on. It is a bit busier, it is a little bit more energetic. There's more movement, there's more, a little bit more chaos, I suppose, but it's still got that balance. We flip back to the one we were just looking at. 
Yes, it's a bit quieter, but it still has all those elements that I was talking about, the balance between the lights and the darks, the slightly quieter areas and the slightly busier areas. It's tending towards the quieter, but that's okay. Like I said, it's a kind of a spectrum and you have to use your judgment about uh, how much of one or the other you put in. Okay, I don't want to go on for too long. I think you get the general idea. It's like when you're doing these kinds of paintings and you're looking at them and you're thinking, oh, this is a bit busy. It's usually because there's too much going on over the whole surface and you need a little bit of quiet space. And if they're a bit dull and you think, well, this isn't really working, it's a bit boring, it's probably because there's not enough variety in the mark making. And if you couple that with a good balance between the light and dark parts of your painting, then you're gonna give yourself the best chance to get the kinds of results that are exciting and energetic, but they're still under control. Okay, I hope you found that enjoyable and useful. And as I said before, if you're interested in finding out more in much more detail about how to go about this kind of work, please do check out the information at the link on the screen for my workshops and my online membership group. Okay, I'll see you soon.